This is the Teachable Soul Podcast. Because we cannot possibly live long enough to make all the mistakes ourselves, let's take a few moments to learn from the mistakes of others. The Teachable Soul Podcast, where guests and listeners like you share stories of failure and teachable moments on the journey to success. Here's your host, Kat Daniels. Welcome to the Teachable Soul Podcast. I'm your host, Kat Daniels, and today with me, I have the pleasure of interviewing Miss Lucy Liu, who is a certified life coach helping women in life transitions get unstuck, beat overwhelm, see clarity, set new goals, live a happier, fulfilling life, and thrive. She is an unshakable optimist, wife, mother, easygoing entrepreneur, women empowerment workshop facilitator, motivational speaker, and now she makes it her passion to help other women rewrite their life story. She also inspires as the host of her weekly podcast, The Lucy Lou Show. Welcome, Lucy. Thank you so much for having me, Kat. Absolutely. Thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. So um, do you want to kind of just start by telling us uh, either what led you down this coaching path now and, and, and how you got to where you are today first? Wow, that's going to take forever. <laughs> <laughs> I like to start with the long form question. <laughs> yeah, let's just, you know, have a little, little shortened version, maybe. <laughs> sure. Okay. So actually, I, I've been coaching for almost two years. And before that, I had no idea what coaching was. I'm <laughs> brutally being honest, I grew up not knowing anyone who was a life coach or who okay. seeked help, you know, and we just lived on with our lives in, the hard way. Right. It took Mm -hmm. us at one point of my life, I was unhealthy, overstressed, unhappy, and I was lost at one point. And it took me a decade of personal development, digging really deep and changing all my habits and changing my mindset, all the inner work. And that took a decade to a point in my life now where I really truly enjoy my life, having fulfillment in what I do and enjoying the moment with mindfulness. And that took such a long time. And when I learned about the power of coaching or the availability of the coaching industry, I was like, wow, you Mm -hmm. know, I am set out for that because my friends would come for, come to me for advice. Right. Right. And I feel like I have this superpower to turn any negative into positive. And I think that's what's important is when you set your mindset on a positive path, Mm -hmm. you know, more abundance starts to show up in your life. And that's what I do with my clients. I like to expedite that process, you know, not take a decade. We want to do that in transform your life, make your life completely different in three to six months. That's awesome. And yeah, I didn't know anything about coaching growing up either at all. Um, Especially, I mean, you know, you know about like sports coaching, but I didn't know anything about life coaching. I thought that everybody just went to like, if you had issues or wanted to work through anything, you went to a psychologist or a therapist of some sort. I had no idea, you know, the the benefits or, or things that life coaching or business coaching, whatever kind of coaching, you know, anyone does can do for you, but it can ex- exponentially. I mean, just like you said, it's, it's faster, basically. <laughs> it's exactly. a fast track. Yeah. Exactly. Which is super awesome. Yeah. But obviously I made a lot of bold moves in my life to create that kind of life I have now in order to inspire other women. Right. So yeah, definitely a lot of l- lessons I learned along the way. And when I actually, you know, took the education to become a coach, I realized we're not actually giving advice. Mm -hmm. So what I was doing to my friends was, was actually wrong. You know, we're not really um, giving advice. We're asking questions. Yeah. The wisdom, the well of wisdom is already inside of each of us, but Mm -hmm. we have to bring that out. And especially as women, we are always seeking external validations. So a lot of times we have the answer within us and you just have to be sure of yourself and really see the path more clearly instead of it being foggy. Mm -hmm, For sure. So you help them to do that, to see the path more clearly, right? 
Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so um, where did you grow up? I, I was actually born in China and okay. I grew up in Los Angeles mm-hmm. and I married uh, to my husband who's Taiwanese. So we moved back to Asia and now we're back in Los Angeles. So a lot of moving, a lot of adjusting and that, that was kind of like, I, I've never been to Taiwan. Um, I married over there and I had no friends, no family members there. And all my friends were like, how do you do it? Right? Like how, how can you survive in a strange country like that? And without any support. And I felt Mm -hmm. that's when I realized, oh, maybe I have something special going on. I have this power to see the positives. Mm -hmm. And because everything in our life, all these circumstances around us outside of our environment is they're actually neutral. Mm -hmm. we put a positive or a negative in front of that situation. Right. And that would determine our entire experience. Mm. That's for sure. Yeah. So you, so did you enjoy your time in Taiwan? In the beginning? No. To be honest, I was complaining about everything, you know, um, adjusting to the culture, the weather, you know, it's really humid over there. And I'm, I'm, I grew up in, you know, LA where we have really nice weather. Right. So it's just these outside circumstances, Mm -hmm. right? These are the outside circumstances that we cannot control. Right. And when you are stressing over these factors that you cannot control, you're not going to be happy. And there's nothing you can do because these factors you cannot change. And as I learned through my personal development journey, I changed my mindset. I started to look for the gratitudes, right? I started to look for the abundance, to look for the good in things. And when I shift my focus, that's when the focus grows. Like what we focus on grows. Right. So if you focus on the positives, those positives will grow Mm -hmm. and it brings you more joy and it brings you more abundance. And everything started to to become more joyful. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So did you have a life coach help you to do all that or were you able to do that work on your but well, you did say it took you a decade, right? Yeah. So actually I did that all by myself, but I did go through, I read a lot and I went through a lot of personal development myself. But when I wanted to become a coach, Mm -hmm. I did get myself a business coach and that made a bunch of difference, like a a world of difference. So I would definitely say it makes such a difference. And I always tell people, you know, get yourself a coach. It doesn't have to be me, Mm -hmm. but I want you to have a coach and experience that kind of exponential growth. Right. Like to really call you out and, you know, stop being in that negative spiral or doubtful spiral of yourself. Yeah. So what caused all of the moves? Because you mentioned like you had moved to LA and then you got married in Taiwan and I assumed you stay there at least for a little while. And now you guys are back in LA again. What, what did all that for you guys? Well, moving back, LA is my home base. So yeah. I, we knew we are, we were always going to move back. So that's, oh, that's that was easy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the move there, actually, we would have to rewind a little bit. And um, I dropped myself out of high school with straight A's. So I used to be a hustler. Like <laughs> I was not, I wasn't happy with the speed I was going. Like I wanted things in my life, like at lightning speed, right? Oh, I was girl, like, the, <laughs> I was the hustler. I'm like, oh, the school is taking forever, mm-hmm. right? And yeah. even though I had straight A's, I knew I was going to get into a good college and everything, but I was like, this is taking too long. Like, yeah. I was like looking at the road ahead and I was like, I need to get there faster. Like, mm-hmm. so I dropped myself out of high school, even with straight A's. I had mm-hmm. perfect GPA and I was like, I'm getting myself out of here. So yeah. I took what we call a state proficiency test to mm-hmm. get um to get a diploma to in order to enroll in a local college. And mm-hmm. that's what I did. And then I hustled myself through. Well, I was very disciplined. I knew exactly where I was going. Right. I was like, I just need to get there faster. Mm-hmm. 
So I did transfer into UCLA and I was doing well. I majored in econ. I interned at a really prestigious um, financial institution. And we had this really amazing office in LA where we see the whole, you know, downtown view and across the street, we have a uh, century city, like where all the movie stars hang out. And it was just like shiny objects, right? Um, the Hollywood life, I was going to live that and it's going to be great. I'm going to buy a penthouse and all of that. Mm, Live in the dream. (laughs) Yes. So that's what I thought. Mm. But I felt it wasn't aligned with my feelings. Yeah. So yeah, all that is good. I know I'm going to be making money because everyone around me was, and I was doing okay financially but I wasn't really happy. Mm-hmm. Like it wasn't aligned with my values. Right. Like I felt like it wasn't aligned with my personality. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. So I kind of pretty much gave all that up. Mm-hmm. Right. And I feel that alignment was more important than money. Yeah. Which, you know, when you're young, you think you want to buy all the brand names, all the materialistic, th- materialistic things were important. Yeah. But once you really have that in your hand, once you're really driving a BMW and like, you know, holding these brand name purses, it doesn't really mean that much anymore. Mm-hmm. Whereas to like right now, it would be so much, it's, it feels so much better to have that alignment because when you're out of alignment, Mm -hmm. you're not going to be happy. Yeah. No, absolutely. So did you quit your job at the time or like how, what, how did you transition there? I I actually only interned. So I pretty much left um, after college. I left the States after college and started a completely new life. So what did you do? Um, well, my husband had, their family had a family business. Okay. And we worked there for uh, probably almost 10 years before I started our own business. Uh-huh. Yeah. And everyone says, it, see, that's another dilemma when you have a family business. Yeah. You're supposed to stay in the family business. And, right. and even I think from the second year on, we felt like we weren't aligned with our family values. Like what we always uh, disagreed with our parents, like the direction we were going, like where we want to take the company. And it was like an ongoing conversation. Mm -hmm. And we felt like it wasn't aligned with us again, but for the good of the family. Right. Right. We still stayed for another five to six years Mm -hmm. so that we can do a lot of reform and reorganize the company so that it's more healthy, Mm -hmm. so that uh, we fired a lot of um, people that weren't supposed to be there. And we trained new staff that Mm -hmm. were much better for the company so that it was a complete um, healthy, structured company before we decided to leave. Okay. Well, that's Awesome. I mean, it sounds like you improved it a lot then. So tell me about how that was because you grew up um, in LA. So you grew up with a very like westernized is, is what they usually call it. I think yes. um, like way of, of, of um, what's the word uh, growing up is what I'm trying to say basically. But so how was it building a business because I would, I would imagine personally, if I were to go to another country, I would still have that westernized mind frame. But I imagine that trying to build a business in another country would, they would, the the people, the customers, the people who work there, everybody around me would have a completely different mindset. Especially exactly. Well, that's why where I say personal development comes in handy, and this is true no matter where you are, right. no matter what type of business you have, you're always going to be working on your mindset. And you really don't, not just to think of yourself as the CEO of your company, but you have to think of you are the CEO of your life. 
So a CEO sets the strategy and vision for a com- cooperation, and it's up to each of us to set the strategy and vision for our own lives because we are the CEO of our lives. And your company is going to be a direct reflection of your life. So if you clean up your life, if your life is really good, it's going to reflect in your company directly. Mm -hmm. So that's really important. That's how important it is. Like my clients come to me for personal reasons. For example, they want to up, you know, up level their confidence, but you know, the result is not just increase in confidence. The result is going to be increase their confidence plus increase the revenue in their business because right. as a result of that increased confidence. Right, exactly. Which, yeah, you can't really up-level your, your income without increasing, or increasing your confidence like that, like you mentioned. Exactly. And obviously, when you have self-confidence, you know, everything's going to be positive, even mm-hmm. when things don't go us plan because they never do. <laughs> right. <laughs> like for me, I always have faith that mm-hmm. things happen for a reason. Yeah. So I always look for positive alternatives. Mm-hmm. Um, I always say, hey, life goes on. It just, it doesn't mean I don't care. It doesn't mean I get it all. It just means that next time, next time when I have a negative thought, I just opposite that, right? Mm-hmm. Like when you think, oh my God, this is hard. Just say it out loud oh, I can totally do this. Right. Like just say the exact opposite and opposite is magic. Right. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. So now you have a coaching business, but do you and your husband have your own business as well? Yes. And we still, and we still help out the family, but my coaching business is my priority right now because I just enjoy it so much. Like it's my passion. And and I always say this, when you're finding purpose or if you know what you're doing is right, you can do this exercise. Sorry for being saying this, but imagine like close your eyes and imagine yourself on your deathbed, lay in your bed before you go to sleep, close your eyes and feel it. Like if you were on your deathbed, would you be happy doing what you're doing right now? And if the answer is yes, then then that you've congratulations. Right. <laughs> right. Go and celebrate if, that. <laughs> right. If it's not, like for me, that's true. When when if I'm like coaching my clients, that's what I want to be doing. Like I, if I'm making You know, even if I help one person, like when I started my podcast, I'm like, even if I just help one person, I'm doing good to the world. I'm making my part of the contribution to the positive world, right? Right, absolutely. But I already have three ladies who listen to my podcast and it inspired them to start their own podcasts as well. Oh, that's awesome. And that makes just, that just brings me so much joy Mm -hmm. because others are inspired because that's what I want to do. You know, for the rest of my life, I want to, I want to inspire hope. I want to inspire confidence. I want to inspire happiness. Yeah. Which is, yeah, that's super important. And especially <laughs> like in the times that we're in now, I think that those things are are going to become even more important than they have been previously. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a little bit different right now. Well, as we're, as we're recording this, we're going through the pandemic. We're going through a lot of society unrest. Everyone is very unsettled and sad. There's a lot of emotions going on and that's totally valid. Whatever you're feeling is totally valid. And we all want to get rid of 2020 so bad, but (laughs) it's a year that we are all growing together. Yeah, for sure. I am. I've seen like people keep talking about like the negative things of the unrest and things like that. But Mm -hmm. I am so, and at first that's what I saw like on social media and things like that was just the negative side of things. But I'm really grateful actually, because for the last like 24 hours, almost, it seems like it's switching in a completely opposite direction. Like you said, opposites are magic. And (laughs) It seems like, for instance, I was recording an episode on another podcast that I have. And while I was recording at the White House or or in DC, which I'm near DC right now, 
So during that time they had, there was a negative thing that happened. Basically they had sh- shot like the tear gas and things like that into a, a peaceful protest. Like there wasn't anything wrong going on. They just did. And nobody understood why. And then today, all I've seen is like other officers kneeling and putting down their shields, like with protesters. And that just makes me feel so much better because I thought we were really headed in a, in a, in a negative down a negative path there for a minute. And then I'm like, okay, well, as long as we can come together and, you know, realize that things need to change together, then we can make the change happen. And also we can do it in a positive way versus the way I thought it was headed. (laughs) Yeah, I I agree with you completely, Kat. And, you know, my mindset is always in the, there is always a way mode. Like when the pandemic hit, I'm like, oh, but there's going to be a way, you know, scientists will find a cure and vaccine will be okay. We're going to go through this. Mm -hmm. Uh, So basically that's the mindset I go into any situation with, even though I might not have an answer today, but I know the answer will come and there will be opportunities. Look at how many people are starting businesses. I'm talking to so many ladies now, they're starting their business and they've been waiting all their lives Mm. for this opportunity because they were so scared. But now they're forced into turning their hobbies, Mm -hmm. you know, turning making candles and drawing watercolors like into their business. But that's what they love doing. Right. Absolutely. I know. I'm so excited for that. Originally, I thought, I think we all kind of thought in the first like two weeks of, of, of COVID-19 going on in the lockdown or not lockdown, but like everybody indoors, that it was going to be horrible for two weeks, but then over in two weeks and then it extended <laughs> and continued. And I think a lot of people started to freak out, but yeah, I've seen the same. I mean, so many people are, are forced to be home with their kids and honestly, like relationships are, you know, some are obviously getting worse in some ways, but some are on as well getting better. I mean, you're forced to sit there and face all of your issues, <laughs> you know, and you can't get away from it. <laughs> and there's yeah. no more distractions basically. So yeah. and you're also connecting yourself to your inner self, mm, mm-hmm. right? A part you might be connecting with the part of you that you've, you know, that was hidden away. Right. And even like you talked about being with your kids, I, I used a watercolor too. And um, because of homeschooling my girl, I have to take her art class every day. She's like yeah. the teacher and I have to draw. I'm like, so awesome. I've been playing with crayons, watercolor markers, right? anything you name it. And yeah. that part, we haven't been given a chance since our childhood. Yeah, for sure. I love to, my daughter and I have always colored together for some reason. I don't know why, but um, one day I remember when she was like, one or two, right when she started coloring, she asked me if I wanted to color with her and we just haven't stopped. (laughs) Yeah. I'm doing it every day. Yeah, I know. And it's (laughs) so like soothing and, and calming. (laughs) It is. I had no idea. Let me, maybe this is why kids are always happy all the time. They get to play and like that's, and color, you know, connecting with your inner child, I guess, as they say, is also important. Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. Yeah. So what are some of the mistakes that you can identify that you made along the way, whether it be in personal development or business, you know, building a business with your family, I think as well is, is different than building a business on your own. So can you share with us some of those lessons learned? I think there are so many lessons learned, but for me, I think what was really important that I got out of everything is that we're going to be thrown rocks at. Like life is just going to throw rocks at us no matter what. Okay. So do you see these rocks as boulders in your way? Mm -hmm. Or do you see these rocks as the exact pebbles that are paving your way to happiness and success? Mm -hmm. So that mindset will determine what those rocks become. If you see them as pebbles paving your way to your next version of your better self, then think each of those rocks thrown at you. And that's going to bring out the best version of yourself. Mm, That's a great use of imagery there. I love that. That's great. Like stepping Mm -hmm. stones, basically. (laughs) Exactly. And also whatever's stopping us, it's always your own limiting beliefs, Mm. right? If you feel you're not good enough, who told you so? Most of the time it's yourself. 
Right. Right. Sometimes, you know, in the rare chance, if someone in your past who have told you so, they're obviously a toxin. Yeah. So you don't have to listen to them and just throw that out. Right. right? We all have limiting beliefs. These little negative voices, just be very aware of them. They pop up everywhere and they do. You know, no matter, no matter if, even if you're a guru, they, they pop up as well. It's just, Mm -hmm. they have the tools to shush those little voices and you can too. And it all starts with awareness. Mm -hmm. Anytime you realize those little voices are talking to you, Mm -hmm. just think of them as like a little pet, give it a name. You're like, ah, you're so cute. (laughs) Okay. Okay. I'm not going to listen to you. Okay? Yeah, because your intuition is going to guide you to a higher place. Mm, for sure. So what is a limiting belief that you were able to overcome about? Oh, I so many. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> What's the biggest one for you? <laughs> oh, biggest one is obviously my name. Right. So my name is Lucy Liu. Someone else by that name is so famous. Mm. So amazing. Right. You can't even hate her. No. (laughs) Because I love her. And then it's like, okay, so I will never be someone. Mm -hmm. Right. So I kind of grew up like when I was in Taiwan, I was going through this stage of like, I might as well just retire now because I'm not going to do anything great in life. Mm. Right. So I had no, really no momentum to move forward because I feel like I will never be as successful as her. Mm -hmm. So that I think that part kind of caused some of my unhappiness at the Mm -hmm. moment. Yeah. And really when I realized that, well, we all know this, right? You're not supposed to compare yourself to others, but it's kind of hard to do. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it is. Especially yeah. when it's someone like that who's like totally right. in your face pretty so much what, all the time. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. you got to make sure you're focusing on the right things. Mm. Like if you're focusing on that, that's going to grow, right? Like, oh, I'm nobody. I'm not going anywhere. But if I focus on how amazing I am, what mm-hmm. I can do, mm-hmm. then that's that's all uphill from there. Yeah, for sure. Right. And that's yeah. how I started. Uh, So that was one of my major limiting beliefs in life. And the second one was that even though I graduated from a prestigious college, uh, university, as the child of immigrants, I always felt my English isn't good enough. Like I used to tell everyone, I'm like, I can't do this. I can't be a coach. I can't be a speaker. I can't do it. My English isn't good enough. Like, Mm. So that was another one of my limiting beliefs. And because I'm always shattering my clients' Mm -hmm. beliefs, I was like, I need to shatter my own, right? So Mm -hmm. that's why I started my podcast in my name. (laughs) And I have to speak English, obviously. Right. (laughs) So yeah, there you go. And it it could be done just like that when you make that decision. Oh yeah, 100%. But sometimes I... I I have done this. Like I have realized making a decision basically is all that it takes. And then once you've made the decision, you can pretty much move forward, like as fast as you desire to move forward. But I have found that sometimes even making that decision is like the most grueling process of it all. Exactly. (laughs) The decision makes all the difference. Like, okay, I'm going to talk about another time. When I was five, I saw someone drown. So all my life, I couldn't swim. I was scared of water. I hate water. I don't even drink water. Like my husband used to call me a camel. I just don't (laughs) like water. Yeah. So last year, I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, okay, I'm talking about limiting beliefs. What other limiting beliefs can I break for myself? And I was like, that's it. You know, putting my head underwater would be like a big thing for me. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And when I made that decision... Mm-hmm. I just did it. Yeah. So for 30 something years, I, I, well, in high school, we have to pass a swimming proficiency test. Yeah. So I did it like I practiced for months and months. I did it with my head out of water. Mm-hmm. So couldn't do it. And after 30 something years, because I made that decision, I was able to. So mindset is a moment to moment shift. And that yeah. decision is amazing. It's right. so powerful. Your mind is so powerful. So be sure to, you know, really check yourself where you're putting your mind to. 
Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You spent 30 years avoiding water <laughs> almost altogether. And within seconds, all you had to do was put your head underwater and, mm-hmm. you know, now because I was so determined. Yeah. I made that decision. I'm like, I'm going to make it happen. And I can, mm-hmm. I will see yeah. these positive affirmations really work. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, um, I'm in a group at, together basically with a bunch of women entrepreneurs. And one of the things that we talked about recently was audio books that you can listen to while you sleep that are basically just entirely, you know, positive aspirations that you can use for yourself. And I'm, I haven't bought one yet, but I'm gonna, <laughs> cause I'm super excited about them because I also went through like a, it's called rapid transformational therapy session where they give you your own personalized recording that you listen to before bed basically. And so, yeah, I'm a huge believer in them. <laughs> Yeah, it really works. It's amazing. And I run something called, or I would I would say I facilitate something called the I Am Remarkable mm-hmm. workshop. It's a workshop originally initiated by Google. Mm-hmm. And that's what it does. Pretty much it amplifies your confidence by pointing out how remarkable you are. Oh, that's awesome. So it's very important that we think of how remarkable we are. Just like we, you know, list out our gratitudes, you have to think of how amazing you are. Right, Kat? You are amazing. You're remarkable. You're incredible. (laughs) So are you. (laughs) See, that's so powerful. And if you really think that way, you're going to smile all day. Right. right? Yeah. And yes, that's... and when you have a coach, that's what you remind your clients. That's what I do with my clients to remind them how incredible they are Mm -hmm. and to hold them accountable and make sure they're staying focused on their lane Mm -hmm. and not worried about what's on the other lanes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Cause comparing your lane to someone else's lane. That's, I'm a huge proponent of that because I had a a non-traditional like life path kind of. And, and I'm, and so did my mom, my mom, she uh, had been an LPN nurse all her life for 25 years, I think. And she went back to school after 25 years to get her RN and she was like 50 something at the time. And so I'm, I'm, I love stories like that where everybody, you know, it, it, you don't have to be a certain age to do the things that you want to do. Like it doesn't, it genuinely doesn't matter at all. (laughs) You can still do whatever you want. Yes. Congratulations. That's so amazing to hear. Like I always love those stories too. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me, do you do the workshop regularly? Like, do you host that or facilitate it often? I used to do quarterly and because of what's going on right now, I'm doing them monthly. Oh, Cool. And they are virtual. So if oh. you connect with me, you can keep an eye on that. Awesome. Is that like in your newsletter type deal that you offer that? I'm very active on social media. So if you mm-hmm. connect with me in any way, you'll be able to hear info like that. But you can also get on my newsletters, which I send out the invitation as well. It's completely free. And a hundred percent, I would say a hundred percent past attendees have said they had increase in confidence and helped them shatter some of their own limiting beliefs. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. And super like, especially since you're doing it for free, that's really important right now. That's really great. Thank you. For yeah. That's, that that's a movement <laughs> I believe in because yeah. it's really powerful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I completely agree. I was talking to my brother one time and I was like, I really feel like, you know, the only thing remarkable about me or, or that I've been told is that I have an ability to kind of put myself in other people's shoes, which I didn't realize up until someone actually told me that not everyone can do that. <laughs> I thought that's the way everybody thought. But yeah, I was actually told that, it, no, that's not the case. <laughs> this is why I journal my daily wins every day. Mm. Like you have to really intentionally look for the small wins. Yeah, for sure. Right. It's not that you must be doing something so grand, right? You're like talking to Oprah. That's amazing. No. If you gain one follower on social media, that's amazing. You know, don't look at the lack. Focus on what you have, what you gained. Like focus on the smallest tiny wins. And these little tiny wins adds up. Mm Mm-hmm. 
For sure. So if someone was on, was just starting a personal development journey, what would be the first piece of advice that you would give them? Oh, definitely start journaling. There's a whole routine, right? We got to talk about routine then. (laughs) Um, You have to explore Mm -hmm. because there are available resources, but people work differently. Some people journal in the morning, some people journal at night. You got to try it to know what makes you feel good because Mm -hmm. we're different. We're all human, right? But you got to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, Whether that be journaling your gratitudes or your wins and just even the action of pen on paper is so powerful. It's actually a healing method. Like people have healed trauma from just the action of writing. Yeah. One of your podcast episodes is called that, right? Yes. And listen to podcasts. Come on, right? There are millions of podcasts out there and they're free resource for you. Yeah, I, um, one of my guests, Julie Ties on my podcast, her episode was called Homeless to Six Figure. So she grew up in a trailer park and she was talking about how she was so poor that she had to steal people's lunch. She didn't have money. And so she said when she first started, she took every podcast she listened to as gold. Like we take for granted the information you're going. Don't just listen. Like really take all these information that we're talking about as gold right? If it helps you take these golden nuggets and really implement them, you will start changing your life. Yeah. And then you can do more, Mm -hmm. right? Then you can start taking courses. Then you can get yourself a coach, but it, you know, all the things that you can do in the beginning, like meditation, like listen to podcasts, writing, all these things are free. Yeah. So you can always start free. You can always start somewhere. And then if you do it consistently, you will see a change. And Mm -hmm. then you can move on to, you know, really getting yourself a coach and other sorts. Right. Yeah. That's, I started with audiobooks initially. I read the, well, I listened, you know, I read, I listened to the book, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Bleep. Uh (laughs) (laughs) Uh-huh. And it's, but it's one of my favorite books, but yeah, I listened to that. And then immediately after that, I like dove into all the podcasts all the time. <laughs> but yeah, we my library luckily has a free app and that's, you know, that we can listen to free audiobooks on and that's exactly how I started. So, yeah. 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 That's amazing. Mhm. Yeah. I also do now oracle cards, but mm-hmm. it's mostly because it helps me kind of figure out how I feel about certain things rather than, you know, thinking that like the cards predict something. <laughs> Right. I would say try it out. Yeah. Right. You know, you don't have to think of it as something woo woo. It's just a different method of Mm -hmm. connecting to yourself. There's Reiki, Mm -hmm. there's, you know, breath work, there's all these different tools. There are tools to help you. And Yeah. yeah, you might not like a certain format. You might prefer another tool, just try it out and yeah, you'll find something that works for you. Yeah. What's your favorite tool? Recently, well, one of my clients, Christine Liu, she's she's a breathwork coach and she was mm-hmm. on my podcast and she gave a mini session and it was so powerful. Like I always mm-hmm. knew about breathwork, but yeah. I didn't really know it in detail. And when she explained it and she gave a little mini session, I was like, wow, this is mind blowing. And I guess that got me through the pandemic without oh. a problem. Awesome. Yeah. One of my favorite podcasts that I originally started listening to was, um, oh, I'm going to space his name. (sighs) He talks about how he was a monk. Oh, he's one of my favorite. Jay, Jay Shetty. That's the guy, (laughs) Jay Shetty. Um, (laughs) He, um, he talked about how he told the story one time about how in, whenever he was in the monastery, the very first thing that they teach anybody who walks in to do is how to breathe. Um, Mm -hmm. And he was watching a class at one point where they were teaching the kids how to breathe. And, you know, after the class was over, he, you know, went went to the instructor and said, you know, why would it be important to teach someone how to breathe? Because, you know, we breathe in and out every day. And so 
he asked why. And the guy was like, because if you don't know how to properly breathe, you can't learn how to do anything else because breathing is the very first thing that we learn or that we do even, you know, when we're born as kids, but you have to, to really know how to do it (laughs) in order to level up, you know, as you say, your (laughs) life. (laughs) Yes. And Mm -hmm. it's, it's actually writing the next chapter. Yeah. Right. Uh, And that's the exciting part. Mm -hmm. You get to write the next chapter. You get to decide how it goes. Mm -hmm. And there's always going to be low points, right? And if you're at the bottom of the V of your life, you know, there's nowhere to go. You're only going up. Yeah. Can only get better from there. (laughs) Well, thank you so much for coming on and meeting with me today. I have really enjoyed this conversation. Um, Were there any other teachable moments that you wanted to share with us? I just want to really say that truly, deeply, madly believe there is a way. Mm -hmm. And I believe it down to the point where it's carved in my bones and it flows in my blood. And I would say it's in every fiber of my being. And that's how instead of finding excuses or, you know, instead of staying in the lows, when you believe there is a way you're going to find a solution, you're going to take those opportunities and more blessings will be coming your way. Yep. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for coming on and speaking with me today. I really appreciate it. And I hope you have a good one. Thank you so much. And to all the beautiful souls listening, thank you for tuning in. If you like our conversation, come say hello to me. I am at social media everywhere at the same handle, M-S-L-U-C-Y-L-I-U, Miss Lucy Liu. Perfect. And what is your website? LucyLuCoaching.com. Perfect. All right. Great. Well, thank you so much again. And you have a good one. You too. Have a beautiful rest of the day. All right. You too. Bye. You have been listening to the Teachable Soul podcast. You can find us on any social media platform, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram as the Teachable Soul or on Twitter as Teachable Soul. Also, if you'd like to help support the show, you can find us at patreon.com slash the Teachable Soul. You can also visit our website for more information at theteachablesoul.com. 